In other countries, where one is born into poverty or in a rich or poor neighborhood, often determines one's access to resources in schools, but it is different in Singapore, said a leader of a global federation of teachers' unions. There is that equality of funding as a baseline, so there's no constant worry about whether you are going to have enough teachers or support, said Dr. David Edwards the General Secretary of Education International. He was speaking to the Straits Times on April 24 about his key takeaways from the International Summit on the Teaching Profession. A gathering of education leaders focus on improving teacher quality and education standards. Singapore, for the first time, hosted the summit's 14th edition, which ran from April 22 to 24 at Raffles City Convention Centre. It was attended by 140 delegates from 18 other countries, including Estonia, China and Australia, who visited Singapore's primary and secondary schools as well as institutes of higher learning and other training institutes. Dr Edwards recounted his visit to Si Ling Primary School in Woodlands on April 22, where he visited the school's rooftop garden and noticed that each pupil had an iPad to assist them with lessons. I first thought that this school was an elite school, he said, likening it to a high school in Beverly Hills, in the United States. But then, I realized that it was just a regular neighborhood school. Here, your zip code does not determine your destiny, he said. Education Minister Chan Chan Singh said, in his closing speech, that a student's financial background should not determine his or her destiny. Instead, the methods and focus of our education system can and should be the determinants of the outcome, he said. We must ensure that students in Singapore, regardless of background, are able to rise beyond their lack of family support. Mr. Chan said he is committed to democratizing access to teaching materials and technology, ensuring that students can continue to dream big as long as they are born here. Our brand of meritocracy is with Singapore characteristics, which will allow each and every child to go as far as they need, he said. He also spoke about the need for a balanced approach to managing educational technology. Along with the urgency of upskilling and reskilling teachers for future challenges. The fundamental principle remains we take care of our teachers, and our teachers will take care of our children. He said. At the closing session, educational leaders from around the world shared their insights and commitments, including ensuring students receive adequate support and prioritizing the well being of teachers and improving their working conditions. There was also a focus on increased international cooperation and learning from one another's practices, with many countries committed to investing in attracting individuals to teacher training programs and retaining teachers in the profession. The first edition of the summit was held in 2011 by then U.S. Secretary of Education Ann Duncan, and it was designed to engage governments and organizations worldwide in discussions about how to strengthen education through a stronger teaching profession. The summit became an annual event and has been hosted by countries like the Netherlands, New Zealand, Canada, Finland and Spain. It has been co-hosted by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD and Education International every year. Speaking to ST, OECD Deputy Secretary-General Yoshiki Tukiuchi said that on top of determinants like OECD's Programme for International Student Assessment, it is crucial to develop 21st-century skills like curiosity and creativity. Subjects like mathematics and reading are important, they are a building stone for everything, but in addition to that, education is something that would provide you with self-esteem. Mr. Tukeuchi said. He added that the visits to the various schools and institutions in Singapore made him realize that, in this country, people accept diversity. People want to make sure that no one is left behind. Mr. Tukeuchi said, recalling how, 
on a visit to Pungalview Primary School on April 24, he saw pupils as young as seven being taught the importance of accepting others. This sort of conviction is shared among government, teachers and everyone, so they are all looking in the same direction. Dr. Edwards said another aspect that stood out for him was the multicultural respect and diversity he saw during his school visit. Citing the example of Hori Raya decorations that had been put up. In other countries, this would be potentially controversial, he said. He said, you have to have a system that prioritizes inclusiveness. You have to have teachers and a school leadership that believe in that and families and communities that are a part of that, and this bodes well for the future of Singapore.